our Tuesday Truth for Kids. This week is the last week that we're going to be looking at animals in the Bible. And what was our animal last week? It was the lion. And Jesus is sometimes described as a lion. But he's also sometimes described as a lamb. The lamb of God. And this is our animal for today. Before we dig into our passage of scripture, though, can you guys remember the tool we've been using? SOAP. S stands for scripture. Then we have an observation. Then we look at application. And then pray. All right. So let's dive right in. Scripture. What is our passage for today that we're going to read about a lamb? Today we're reading from Exodus 12 verses 1 to 13. Exodus is the second book of the Bible, and it's in the Old Testament. It was written by Moses, and it tells the true story of how God rescued his people from Egypt, where they were kept as slaves. Remember the ten plagues with all the locusts and like all those nasty flies and things? Well, this part that we're reading from is just after God warned Pharaoh, that's Egypt's king, about the tenth plague. It's the most horrible plague of them all. God said that he will punish Pharaoh and the Egyptians for not letting his people go. And he said that every firstborn son in Egypt will die. And even the firstborn of the cattle will die too. So that's the son that was born first, the oldest one. But God told his people, the Israelites, how they can be kept safe from his punishment. So let's read in our Bibles now what God's instructions were that the people had to follow to be kept safe. Can you clap or click your fingers every time you hear the word lamb? Right, let's read. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, Each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share with one of their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So what is this very dramatic passage about. What do we notice? Well, God gave his people instructions to follow, and if they followed these instructions, they would be kept safe from his punishment, the 10th plague. God said his people must kill a lamb, eat it, and put the blood on their door frames. And when God passes over their homes, the blood will be a sign that God's people live there and he will not kill the firstborn in those houses. A lamb will die instead of the firstborn. So if they trusted God and followed those instructions, they would be kept safe from his judgment. But being kept safe would cost the lamb's life. 
what did the lamb have to be like? Can you guys remember what God said the lamb had to look like? It had to be a male lamb. The lamb had to be without defect. So that means it had to be perfect. No bones of the lamb could be broken. We read that a bit further on in chapter 12. And the blood of the lamb protected those who trusted in it from punishment. Now, what does all of this mean for us today? We're not slaves in Egypt, but we all are slaves to our sin. And we need to be rescued from sin so that we can have a relationship with God. Just like the lamb died instead of God's people so that they could be rescued if they trusted God's way for rescue, Jesus is the true lamb of God who can rescue us if we trust in him. Can you still remember what the lamb had to be like? Perfect, male, no bones could be broken, and the lamb would die to shed blood so God's people can live? Well, let's think about Jesus and how Jesus is like the lamb. The lamb we read about here is a picture of Jesus, the true lamb of God. Jesus lived on earth as a man. He lived his entire life perfectly. So he lived without defect. And when Jesus died on the cross, none of his bones were broken. Jesus' blood was shed and he died so that we might live. But just like the Israelites had to trust God's instructions, his way to be rescued and follow him, we need to choose to do the same too. We, we, sh- we have a choice to choose and do the same. We need to trust that Jesus is the only way to be rescued from our sin. To trust that means to believe that re- Jesus really did live a perfect life, that he died on the cross in our place, and that he rose again on the third day. And when we believe all of this, God forgives our sin. God has to still punish sin, but Jesus stands in our place so that God doesn't have to punish us. And when we trust in Jesus, we can live close to God in a relationship with him forever. That means now, but also one day when our bodies die, we'll carry on living with God. And not only can we choose to trust in Jesus, but we can also worship him, the true lamb of God, and thank him for everything he did for us so that we can have a way to be rescued. And we can tell others what Jesus has done for them too. Let's all close our eyes and pray together now. God, thank you that you rescue people. Thank you that you didn't leave your people in Egypt as slaves, but that you rescued them out of Egypt and that you gave them a way to be kept safe from your punishment. Thank you that you give us a way to be kept safe from punishment too. God, we know you are just and you are holy, so you need to punish sin. But thank you for giving us Jesus, the true Lamb of God, to stand in our place and take all of that punishment for us so that when we trust in him, we can know you and love you forever. God, help us to worship Jesus. Help us to thank him every day for all he's done for us. And help us to be so grateful for him that we just tell everyone about him. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll start a new series next week. So ask your mom and dad to keep an eye on Facebook or on WhatsApp to see what we're going to be reading about. We'll see you next Tuesday.